Things are getting desperate for the blonde chicks as they post their third straight loss, 91 to 75, falling to the wives. Nearly a third of Dan's points came from Tony Romo, who's expected to be out for four weeks with a broken pinky. With Trent Edwards still clearing his cobwebs, the QB position is looking mighty thin for the anorexics. Facing the dogs next week, Dan's got the fifth waiver pick. Don't worry, Dan. I think Rex Grossman's still going to be available for you. Syrup bombed the Cajuns 93-39 as the Frenchman posted the lowest total in the league for the season. Despite the loss, I'm delighted to be getting occasional manifestos from Johnny these days. Say, has anyone else noticed that you never see Johnny D and Teddy K in the same room? Draw your own conclusions. The Lions spanked the Volcanoes 125-102 as Philip Rivers scored 32 points for the Cats. Susie still posted solid numbers, but Jamarcus Russell's zero-point contribution didn't close the gap. Still, any time a world-class athlete gets spanked by a world leader, it's worth a watch. I don't care who you vote for. We're all going to miss this guy, aren't we? It was just a week ago that Dave suggested... We, we all know we're here to, to humiliate Don. Well, Dave made good on his promise, besting the Kangaroos 100-68. The season's turning out to be a replay of freshman year with everyone from Otto Rechtenwald to Kenny Cho joining the Pummelfest. Godspeed, Dave Bregman. Oh, yeah, Dave, I got a call from that gilf you were dancing between the raindrops with. Phyllis says, Ben's back in for dialysis. Call me. The Dukes rolled over the bellies 100-55. While Milan picked up 52 points between his top two starters, the bellies have struggled to find offense the last two weeks. This week, four of the scoring slots each contributed one point or less, turning the yellow bellies into jelly bellies. The dogs traveled from Ohio down to Alabama to take on the Rednecks, a good move since it lifted the average intelligence in both states just three weeks before the election. Like any good redneck, the Southern boys beat the dogs 171, but threw a flag protesting a double-digit score posted by the dogs' coach. Now there's a guy who doesn't know how to win. Fortunately, Jeff's got other skills beyond potato peeling and trench digging. This week, the Rednecks unveiled their new league counseling channel offering timely trading advice, league rule philosophy, and domestic counseling. Tomorrow, Jeff hosts Jessica Simpson. Set your TiVo. The Rednecks now lead the Selfish Division at 4-2, and two, with three teams locked up at 3-3. Three and three. The Kangaroos have plummeted straight to the basement. Grab some popcorn and a soda, Don. We're watching Blazing Saddles down here tonight. Over in Liberal Land, the Lions are still gliding down the backstretch at 6-0 and oh, with that same 3-3 three three traffic jam just below. Syrup and the wives are pulling up the rear and annoying my graphics staff who have to align that tie game with the rest of the scores. Thanks, guys. October is National Domestic Violence Awareness Month, so it's only fitting that Don and Catherine join Dave and Susie in inter-household combat. In honor of the occasion, we're sending copies of the Domestic Violence Training Manual out to all the home teams this week, as well as two bottles of scotch and Jeff Mockensturm's duty phone number. Good luck, girls, and we'll see you all next week.